Hello everyone and welcome to The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about. This is where we share positive stories about the issues that matter and campaigns that make a difference. I am Ian Morton and welcome to Rooftop TV. So this week we have had a, as ever, couple of really heartwarming stories about what can happen when a community comes together to support those in need. So the first up, first story for this week is about a couple of Syrian refugees called Yusuf and Zahir, who have been making personal protective equipment for a care home in Sheffield, or PPE as we now know it. So Yusuf and Zahir have been training other tailors and seamstresses to make the PPE for the care home in Sheffield. The idea came about through uh, a project which is supported by the charity World's Jewish Relief, which they're doing in collaboration with the Refugee Council. Now the pair wanted to give back to the community, which has just welcomed them so warmly since they come to the country to settle here. And I thought Zahid's comment was particularly uh, touching. He said, even when I have problems, I like to help others as it raises my spirit. I'm not doing this for the reward, I'm doing it to help those in need. Thank you so much to hear and Yusef, really great story and thank you to World Jewish Relief for uh, tipping us off about it. Now our next story is about an inspiring 16 year old from London who started an initiative to address loneliness in care homes. So Nina Anderson, she's managed while she's doing her schoolwork to get more than 50 primary schools to match with a care home each where the pupils then write letters to the care home residents. The scheme is called Community Senior Letters and it's resulted in a number of friendships formed between the pupils and the care home residents. It's yet another inspiring story that we've seen from a young person during COVID-19. As I say, particularly so since Nina has been doing her homework, her homework, her schoolwork while uh, running this really inspiring project. So thank you so much, Nina, and you know a really great reminder of how important kindness is during these times. You know we see a divergence of opinion, especially on social media at the moment, across a range of topics. And you know I think what is often missing is human kindness, and this is a great example of that. So our final story this week is about a campaign to end fuel poverty. So what fuel poverty is, is when a household, it can't afford to keep adequately warm in the colder weather because of the, because of the income of that household. Now in England, 10% of the country, 10% are already in fuel poverty, which is a whopping 2.4 million people. Now the End Fuel Poverty Coalition this week has claimed that an extra 200,000 people, or rather 200,000 households, are likely to fall into fuel poverty because of the economic downturn which we all face right now. Now the coalition has called for urgent action, is written to Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, and it's given him four practical steps that the government can take to end fuel poverty. You can also lend your support for the campaign. There's a petition on change.org and the petition address is www.change.org end fuel poverty. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, folks. Thank you for joining us. You can find out more about today's stories and all the other positive news stories on our website, which is therooftop.news. You can find us on Facebook and on Instagram, which is at news from the rooftop. We're also on Twitter and the Twitter handle is at news from rooftop. And as ever, we love to hear about your positive stories. Please do keep sending them in. If there's anything at all you want us to shout about, email us, editor at therooftop.news. I'm Ian Morton. This is The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay well and we'll see you next week. Take care.